Father, glorious Lord, the eternal God, everlasting King, we thank and bless you for who you are. We thank you for your love, your care, your power, and your mind. Thank you for your grace and your divine enablement. We thank you because of this opportunity we have to learn at your feet. We pray, Lord, that you speak to us at this moment, that through your word, our lives will be stabilized and established to the glory of your name and the blessing of humanity in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we are at this moment looking at the message, preserving the old landmarks in modern days. Preserving the old landmarks in modern days. Why do we need to study this? There is need for this because quite a lot of things are happening. A lot of people are changing the standard of the gospel. A lot of people are bringing in strange fire, and a lot of people are doing things that are not uh, to the glory of the name of the Lord. Uh, many came to this church because of the way they met the church, because of the way they found the church. But over time, they have done quite a lot to change the standard of the church. And uh, there is need for us to always go back to the scripture and be sure that from time to time, everybody, whether old or new, is keeping to the standard of the word of God. Let's look at the scripture in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19, verse 14. It says, Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have said. And uh, we need to understand that the scripture is very, very clear concerning this instruction and concerning this commandment. When the Bible says, thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, this is not just an instruction. It is a commandment from the Lord God himself, and we need to adhere strictly to this commandment. Job chapter 24 verse 2 says, some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and the feed thereof. And then, going to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28, it went to say, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Here we see the fathers being brought in here because there are elders that have uh, seen the foundation of things. They saw the challenges. They came to a conclusion of how things are supposed to be. Now we are going to get into the real father of fathers, which is God himself, because the original foundation was by the instruction of the Lord, from the Lord. And so he said, remove not the old landmark, which thy fathers have set. And they uh, going a step further into the 23rd chapter of Proverbs. It says, uh, chapter 23, verse 10, Remove not the old landmarks, and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Enter not into the field of the fatherless. Uh, verse 11, there says, For their Redeemer is mighty, he shall plead their cause with thee. Here we see again, and again, the scripture telling us not to remove the old or the ancient landmark which the fathers have set. Let's go back a little bit into this issue of landmark. Landed properties were apportioned to the Israelites not long after they got uh, to the promised land. Uh, you remember they left the land of Egypt and then they went to the promised land and on getting to the promised land, uh, Joshua was instructed by God to begin to divide the land onto the people. This distribution was done on tribe by tribe basis. Joshua chapter 13 verse 11 says, Now therefore, divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half tribe of Manasseh. And uh, you understand that two and a half tribes got their portion before Jordan, and then the nine and a half got the rest of it uh, on the other side of Jordan. And so the land was to be used by each family and tribe for their daily livelihood, 
for their future livelihood, for their existence, and each family used stone or some monumental object to make boundaries. And we see that these boundaries are so important that it distinguishes one family or tribe from the other. And God says, you should not in any way for any reason remove any of these landmarks. To remove your neighbor's landmark in the Old Testament amounts to stealing a man's land. And it is a thing that attracts the judgment of God. It, it attracts a cause from God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Landmarks generally are marks and installations in bricks and blocks. Landmarks are generally deeply rooted in the ground so that normal wears and tears to the land does not easily affect the landmark. The landmarks are to identify to distinguish, and to distinguish the borders of every man's lands so that no man crosses into his neighbor's land as inheritances are passed down from one generation to another generation. None were to remove the landmark which they of old time had said. When you go into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 17, here we see, a cause coming from the throne of grace, coming from God himself, upon whosoever will remove any of the landmark belonging to their neighbor. Pro I mean, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 17. Cause be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. So now, if God was so uh, detailed and important about earthly landmark, now come to think of spiritual landmark. We are going to look at this uh, uh, study or teaching under three main subheadings. Number one, the picture of landmarks. The picture of landmarks. Uh, as we look at the picture of landmarks, uh, we are now going to apply it to the spiritual landmark that we are talking about today. We are going to also apply it to the physical landmarks of the church because uh, different churches differ in different ways. Uh, and different churches have their own calling and we know that this church is called unto holiness and to righteousness and any church anywhere that is not on this part of righteousness more than likely is not a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see the picture and then we are going to point number two consider the preference for the old landmark. Preference for the old landmark. And then finally, how do we preserve? Preservation of the old landmark. Let's come back to the first point, the picture of the old landmark. Uh, generally, when you look into Savio's way of work, Savio's often look at corners, cornerstones and run their lines according to them, sometimes digging an extensive area to locate the cornerstone called landmark. So, the landmark we're talking about in the old time is still being used in the modern time because Soviet generally will look for these cornerstones and because of time, because of age, a lot of things may have happened, but because of the deeply rooted nature of the stone called the cornerstone or landmark, the Soviets always dig all the way down to get these stones. They often cannot do their job without locating these stones. Isaiah chapter 62 verses 10 to 12. Go through. Go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up. Cast up the highways. Gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Behold the Lord that proclaim unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not Forsaken. So here we see the word of the Lord is telling the people to go out and then to gather, to gather, not just to gather alone, but also to lift up the standard. And that is why from time to time we come together, we gather together to study the word of God and to see what are the instructions and the commandments of God for us to abide with, to follow, and to live by. And as you come to the church, as you 
come, as you are here for the convention, as you are here in the church from time to time, week after week, don't just come as a nobody. Don't just come as an ordinary member. Come with the intent to do the will of the master. Come to lift up the standard of the word of God. Come to show forth the praise of the name of the Lord. Come to exhibit the glory of God in your life and in the midst of the people of the Lord and the Lord will help us in Jesus name. The landmark of our time is not just that of a physical land but spiritual landmark of the doctrines and the teachings of the world of God. Come to think of it, let's get back to the uh, Soviet way of doing their work again. A perfect straight line could be projected around the world, and when it returned to the point of beginning, it will land on the exact dot from where it started. Then it could be projected round again and form only one single line with the line on the second round falling exactly on the line which was made on the first round. So, with the lines of truth, they will be projected from the teachings of Christ and the apostles right on down through the ages, the entire Christian era. And if these lines of truth, if this line of the gospel have been maintained straight, they can be doubled back along the same line, clear to the point of beginning, and still form one single line, no wider than the original line. The point I'm making is, if we stand on the truth, no matter how far we go, no matter how wide we go, we're still coming back on the same thing, wherever you are, whether we're here in the United States of America, or some others are over there in Africa, some are over there in Europe, on the same truth of the gospel, we are all going to be back on the same point, and if for any reason there is a, 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 a little wideness in the line, it's because there is a variance or deviation in one way or the other. The Lord will help us so that we will be preservers of the gospel of God in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Oh, the Lord will keep us and help us in Jesus' name. So as we talk about landmark, understand uh, that these are installations of many years. These are installations of ages. These are installations by which the church of Christ has stood and weathered the storm of life. And yet, despite the winds that blew and the storms that rage, the church has come to stay. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. And so, if in the days gone by, we are not to tamper with the landmark, now, today, we cannot, we must not tamper with the landmark as well in 1973. Deeper Christian Life Ministry was formed by 15 people or started with 15 people and by 1982 the ministry gave back to what we now know today as Deeper Life Bible Church. Deeper Life Bible Church almost from inception established some landmarks that were well driven into the ground of truth into the ground of the word of God or for the distinction and the stability of the church based on the authority of the word of God. Any effort by anyone, man or woman, old or young, no matter how long you may have been in the church, any effort to remove these landmarks will be tantamount to stealing the identity of the church with an intention to compromise and destroy the old time foundation that the fathers of faith have laid in this very church. And by the grace of God, you will not uproot any of the foundation. And I will not uproot the foundation in Jesus' name. As we talk about this foundation, come again to what the Bible says. Proverbs 22, 28. Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have said. Chapter 23, verse 10. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the, of the fatherless. Don't take advantage of the weak people. Don't take advantage of the new people. 
Don't take advantage of the new converts. Don't take advantage of the people that are not so knowledgeable in the, in the word of God to deceive them, to deprive them of the truth, to, to mislead them, and to destroy their life and their future. It says that you be careful so as not to enter into the field of the fatherless. And the Bible says, if you do, verse 11 says, for their redeemer is mighty, he shall plead their cause with thee. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, now that we've seen the picture, what are these landmarks? We're going to see them as we consider the preference for the old landmark understand in the church age quite a lot of things have happened over time and a lot of people have changed things a lot of people have come with their own doctrines and their own teaching and their own way of doing things but we stand upon the solid rock of the word of god somebody say amen to that god bless you and uh, no matter what happened until Christ will come, we will stand upon this truth, and this truth of the gospel we will abide with, abide by, in Jesus' name. Jude, verse 3. Jude, chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the sins. So now understand that the standard we are talking about, which we are to lift up, the landmark we are talking about, which must be made visible, that everyone will know the borders and the boundaries uh, that we as Christians cannot cross into the other, other places uh, that we, being called the children of God, uh, cannot align ourselves with the people of the world. Uh, we need to understand what are these borders uh, and what are these landmarks that we are talking about. We are talking about the landmark of the accuracy of the scripture, the word of God, the word of God, uh, the infallibility of the word of God, uh, the inerrancy of the word of God. Uh, we need to maintain the landmark no matter what happened because heaven and earth will pass away but not a jot or tittle of God's word will pass on fulfilled. Uh, we maintain the accuracy and the standard of the word of God in terms of the Godhead, Godhead uh, that's uh, uh, that the God consists of three separate, distinct, and uh, recognizable personalities and qualities, perfectly united, perfectly joined together in one. And we know as God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, are different persons in the Godhead, not merely three names for one person. And so, as we do this, and then we look into what is going on today, we don't want to water down the Godhead of the Father. There are people that will tell you that uh, uh, Jesus is God, and Jesus is the Holy Spirit, uh, and that uh, uh, when Jesus was here, there was no God in heaven, and so on and so forth. All those are errors that we must fight against, uh, contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered um, to the saints. Uh, we need to understand again also that people will tell you that the virgin birth is fake, it's not real. Well, according to the scripture, Jesus was born by virgin Mary. So, we contend for that also. We contend for the fact that mom was uh, born in sin, raised in sin, and that there is a total depravity and sinfulness uh, in the life of man, which brought guilt and condemnation into all man. Nobody was born a saint, and that is why every living being will need to recognize their sinfulness, accept their sinfulness, repent of it, and return unto the Lord. Uh, we also need to understand that if we say we are children of God, if we say we are repenting of our sins, if we say that we have come to the Lord in truth and in spirit, even as the Bible says that if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. It says, Behold, all things are become new. That then means that there is need for restitution. That is another standard, another landmark that you must maintain no matter who you are. You cannot 
Get to a point in your life that you think you are above restitution, making right the wrong things that you have done, and restoring back to the rightful owner whatsoever belongs to them that you have taken uh, from them. We establish, maintain, and hold on to the landmark of water baptism, which is the public open uh, display and the declaration of our personal private encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ in, uh, in repentance and in conversion. That means after you are repented of your sins, you turn away from it completely, you now come to the public and say, well, according to the scripture, I am dead with Christ and buried with him and now I am resurrected together with Christ, living in the newness of life. We are told according to Paul the Apostle, that uh, it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that liveth in me. We also want to hold them firm to the doctrine and the teaching of the Lord's Supper, by which we partake of the Lord's blood and uh, the body. How about entire sanctification called holiness? Uh, you cannot say you are in the Lord without being holy. God is holy. Heaven is holy. The angels of God in heaven are holy. And if I and if you and I must walk with God, we must walk with Him in holiness. And that experience or encounter of holiness is the definite act of God's grace subsequent to the new birth by which every believer's heart is purified and made pure and holy. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. John chapter 17. I look at uh, verses 15 to 17. Gospel according to St. John uh, chapter 17. Here we see the prayer of the master, the Lord Jesus Christ, for every believer that they will be sanctified and be prepared for heaven. John chapter 17, verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Every believer needs to understand that although they may be living in this world, they are not part of this world. They are pilgrims and strangers passing through. And uh, our destination is not the grave. Our destination is not this world. Our destination is heaven. And by the grace of God, we make it to heaven in Jesus' name. We also need to understand that if you are a child of God, there is a provision to be partaker of the spirit of the Lord. Now, at conversion, you have a measure of the spirit. As, men, as many as received him, to them God gave the power to become the sons of God. You have the power of the Lord. You have the power of the Holy Ghost. But then, after, as you walk with the Lord, as you commit yourself, as you consecrate yourself, as you devote yourself, as you make yourself available for the Lord, the Lord make available the fullness of the Holy Ghost into your life, which we call the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And that is the endowment of power from on high. The Bible tells us and ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and then unto the uttermost part of the earth. You'll find that in the Acts of the Apostle chapter 1 verse 8. And then the book of Joel went further to tell us uh, that uh, God will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. And I pray if you are here today and you are yet to be filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God uh, that that experience will come your way in Jesus' name. Maybe I should share this with you. I told you the other time that we just finished the, the youth fest uh, uh, in June. And by the grace of God, as we all gather together praying, and the young people from ages 13 through to 17, praying and seeking the face of the Lord and calling upon the name of the Lord, heavens opened, and 40 of them in one night at about the same time, God filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and uh, the pastor's wife was there and was blessed, and with that experience also, and she also got filled, making 41 people in one night. Uh, if you're here today, and you've been in the faith for quite some time, and you're wondering, is this Holy Ghost baptism still real or not? Uh, 
I'm here to let you know it is real and it is coming your way. It is coming your way. It is coming your way in Jesus' name. And just, just be expectant and just be prepared for it. And the Lord will fill you up with it in Jesus' name. As we look at this standard and the doctrines, uh, we look at the standard and the doctrine of redemption from the cause of the law. And I'm here to tell you that uh, there is no cause that can come upon you in any way or form in Jesus' name. Any cause from anywhere for any reason the power of the Lord will destroy them. Why? Because Jesus is made a cause for all. The Bible says, for cause be him that hang on the tree. Now, look at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. Open your Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 15. We are looking at the 26 verse over there. 26 verse, Exodus chapter 15 verse 16 and then you see the promise of the father unto you the promise of the father unto me the promise of the father to anyone and everyone that you come upon the name of the lord and as we come together to call upon him to trust in him i am assuring you that any cause and every cause upon your life upon your lineage is destroyed in jesus name Somebody say amen to that. Amen. God bless you. Exodus, what chapter did I tell you? Exodus chapter 15. And what verse? Verse 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout, I am healed. Somebody shout, I am free. Somebody shout, I am delivered. You are delivered, you are healed from every sicknesses, oppression, affliction, and torment in the name of Jesus. Hold on firm to that, no matter what may be happening around you, what may be happening in your family, what may be happening uh, in, in your community, understand you are a different person. You are untouchable. Somebody say, I am untouchable. Amen. Amen. Someone say, I am unkillable. Nothing can kill you. No cancer can kill you. And if there is any sickness in your body, I speak the word of life unto you right now that every sickness, every infirmity, every affliction in your body, Pack your load, get out from there now in Jesus' name. And the hands of God will be upon you perpetually in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter chapter 2. We're looking at uh, the uh, the 24th verse over there. And see what the Lord has done for you to remove every trace of cause from your life. And to make you free. To make you a liberated person. A free person. No more under you. No more under cause. No more under affliction. No more under torment in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Verse 24 of it says, Who his own self bear was since in his own body. On the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. I say you are healed in Jesus' name. All those uh, long time sicknesses and diseases, all those sleepless nights, all those nightmares, uh, the healing virtue of the Lord, the healing part of the Lord coming your way right now in Jesus' name. And uh, let the weak say, I am strong. Wrong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what Christ Jesus had done for you, and uh, you are a new person in Jesus' name. Again, looking at the standard of the word of God, looking at the doctrines, looking at the landmarks of the scripture, which we need to look into, and that of evangelism. Evangelism. Understand, open your Bible very quickly to the book of um, Ephesians, Ephesians we look at chapter 6 right there and see what is expected of you and expected of me as we are 
called the children of the Most High God. Chapter 6, verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That means you must be an evangelist. I must be an evangelist. We must preach the word of God in season and out of season. When it is convenient, when it is not convenient, we must preach the word. And we are told in the scripture that he that winneth soul is wise. You'll be wise in Jesus' name. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20 and see the instruction of the master unto you and unto me concerning evangelism. And so, nobody has an excuse to say, well, I have not been given a position in the church, a title in the church, I have not been allowed to walk. There are two major things that you need nobody to appoint you to do. You need nobody to appoint you to into prayer. It is everybody's ministry. It is every believer's ministry. If you must grow in grace, if you must uh, progress in life, uh, you must be a man of prayer and a woman of prayer, and that in his evangelism. You need no title. You need no honorary degree to be able to preach the gospel. The Samaritan woman met with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and immediately she ran back to the city declaring and proclaiming Jesus Christ unto the people. So, you cannot say that you have not been appointed anywhere you go, everywhere you go. The work, the word of God must be in your mouth. And uh, as you speak the word, heaven will back you up in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all, even unto the end of the world. Now come again at this. Jesus is saying, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. All these uh, foundations we are talking about, the landmarks we are talking about, are commandments from the Lord, and we have no choice other than to just obey and abide the, to, uh, by what the Master has said. I get to the next uh, landmark of the scripture that we need to pay attention unto, and uh, that is on the sacredness of marriage. The sacredness of marriage, understand, marriage is one man and one wife, not one man and another, con uh, another concubine. Uh, concubine, not one woman and another concubine, no, it is one man, one wife, and marriage is a man to a woman. A woman to a man, not a man to a man, not a woman to a woman. No matter what is going on in our world today, understand that many are removing the ancient landmark, but we cannot, and we must not, and we should not, for whatsoever reason, no matter the pressure from the presidency, no matter the pressure from our peers, no matter the pressure from the community, no matter the pressure from our society, we will contend earnestly for the faith once delivered unto the saints and the Lord will back us up in Jesus name and so understand that monogamy is what is approved by the Lord nothing like polygamy in any way or form uh, for this cause shall a man leave his father and the mother and be joined together with his wife and the two of them shall become one flesh Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. We see as we are going to Genesis because this is the book of the beginning and everything about marriage uh, began from the book of beginning and so we want to see what the father put in place. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. I pray that if there is any conflict in the family, crisis in the family, confusion in the family, misunderstanding in the family, the Lord will bring a lasting solution in Jesus' name so that both of you will become joined together again and the hands of God will be upon you in Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 23 
verses 11 to 13. Joshua, Joshua chapter 23. I look at it from verse 11. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. As if you do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriages with them and go in unto them, and they to you know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until ye perish from of this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. Here we see the Bible telling us another side of marriage again. That we should not in any way for any reason get united in marriage with unbelievers, with strangers, with ungodly people, with sinners. Even if you have delay, understand that delay is not denial. Understand that God will make a way, even when there seems to be no way. He walks in ways that we cannot see. He will make a way for you in Jesus' name. Sister, he will make a way for you. Brother, he will make a way for you. At God's appointed time, the best of God is coming your way in Jesus' name. Understand also that we have been told, according to the word of the Lord, that Jesus is coming again. Somebody shout, Jesus is coming again. I can't hear you say it in a better way. Jesus is coming again. And he's coming for the ready church. He's coming for the pure church. He's coming for the sanctified church. He's coming for the church that is holy. And I pray that you will be part of that church in Jesus' name. Let's look at it. As the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the, uh, uh, he will come. He will come uh, with the trump of God. He will come with a shout and the ark uh, uh, and the angels will come together with him and when the trumpet sounds all those that are ready all those that are pure, all those that are holy all those that are righteous, all those that are waiting will hear the sound and then they will go together with him in the air. I will look at First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4 I'm looking at it from verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as all that which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring again. Will God bring again with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Somebody say amen. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with this same. So, no matter what the situation may be, Jesus is coming again. Nothing will hinder his coming. Nothing will stop his coming. Nothing will prevent his coming. Jesus is coming again. Are you ready for him? Because when he shall come... Two people will be grinding together. One will be taken, the other will be left. Two people will be sleeping together. Husband and wife, siblings together. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two people walking together at work. One will be taken and the other will be left. I pray you will be ready in Jesus' name. So, Jesus is coming at the rapture. And understand, understand, after Christ has come and taken the sins away, there will be great tribulation. There will be great tribulation, and then there will be suffering untold in the world over here, uh, down below. And then, Jesus will reward the saints that are together at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Understand also that uh, judgment is coming. Judgment is coming upon the world of sinner. Judgment is coming upon the world of the unbeliever. And uh, 
Hell will be the Lord's and the portion of the unsaved. But then the redeemed of the Lord will inherit eternity forever and ever. The saints will not have to go through the white throne judgment because their sins have been judged already. But the unbelievers will be judged. You will not be judged again in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you also the landmark, the, the, the cornerstone of humility. Humility. And as you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, uh, the glory of God will come upon you. The power of God will come upon you. If you will humble yourself, submit unto the Lord, follow the leading of the Lord, the instruction and the commandments of the Lord, you will be sure how God will lift you up. James chapter 4 verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. The cornerstone of humility. In anything that you do. The cornerstone of tithe and offering. There are people in the church, they belong in the church but they are unfaithful and they don't understand that when you don't pay your tithe, your life will be tied. They don't understand that when you don't pay your tithe, you are stealing from God and there is a cause upon thieves. I pray that there be genuine repentance. Bring you all tight into my storehouse and prove me now with it and see if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out blessings in such a way that there will not be enough room to receive it. The Lord is saying bring your tithe to the storehouse. Don't steal from God. It's bad to steal from now from man. Talkless of now stealing from God is a terrible thing terrible thing. Understand, anything you have, everything you have, was given you by God, and it's only asking for 10% of it. And some will argue, is it from the net, or is it from the gross? Understand, when you put your water inside the net, everything drains away. So, it's not from the net, it's from your gross, and there is nothing to debate about that. The landmark of the lordship of Christ and leadership in the church. Understand that Christ is the head of his church and uh, he controls and directs the affairs of the church and Christ has set up leaders over the church leaders in different ways so that there can be organization, there can be administration in everything that we do and uh, Honor your leaders, respect your leaders, submit your leaders is part of the cornerstone of the church because God will make them to give account for you and you don't want them to give it grieving because of your life. And I pray that the Lord will help every one of us to be submissive in everything that we do in Jesus' name. As we look at this cornerstone, understand again that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Understand that the cornerstone of Christian dressing, Christian comportment, Christian deportment is very, very important. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 says in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with broided hair or gold or pear or costly array. Understand the nation in which we are in. The world in which we live today is such that the more exposed you are, the better to them, the better for them. But the word of the Lord is telling us that we should cover our nakedness. Our nakedness. Understand this, this, you see, if they don't open the front, they will open the back, they will open the arm, they will open the, the tummy area, they will open their lap, they will open everything. But as a believer, you must lift up the standard. Somebody shout, lift up the standard. Somebody shall lift up the standard. Whether as a man or as a woman, you lift up the standard of the word of God. Make a clear difference between the world and the church. Understand the church is in the world and the world is, is in the church. But you want to be sure that by the grace of God, you make a difference anywhere you go. Students, whether you are there in the campus, you are making a difference. And parents, daddies, mommy, whether you are there at your job, no matter what others are doing, 
you want to be different. When you follow the multitude, you are never, never recognized. Do something unique. Do something different. And then see God glorified in your life in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians 6, 14 tells us, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Whether in your heart, whether in action, whether in business, whether in anything, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And then First John chapter 2, verse 15 tells us, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The Lord will keep us in Jesus. Then we get to the third point, preserving the old landmark. Preserving the old landmark. Come again to Jude, verse 3. Chapter 1, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you, of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Romans chapter 16 verse 17, take heed unto, your, unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3 verses 15 to 16. But if I tarry long, thou, uh, that thou mayest know. But, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And without controversy, grace is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh and they justified in the spirit, sin of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed in the world, received up in glory. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, study to show thyself, approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the world of the truth. So, brothers and sisters, anywhere you are, anywhere you go, lift up the standard, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. And how do we keep this standard? Number one, you search it. Search the scripture. For they are they that speak of me. Uh, John chapter 5, verses uh, 39 through to 47, we clarifies that very well. You search it, number two. Uh, as you search it, you study it. All these doctrines of the Bible, the instructions of the church, the rules and regulations of the church, how services are to be uh, operated, whether you are a pastor in any location or you, uh, or you are a member in anywhere, you want to be sure that you follow the rules and the regulations of the church. You study the things that needed to be studied, beginning with the word of God. And then you stick to it, number one, search it. Number two, study it. Number three, stick to it. Number four, stay on it. Stay on it. And number five, number five, you share it. The same thing you have received, you share it with other people. Psalm 68 verse 11 says, The Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those that published it. Never compromise the standard. We are different and we are unique. We are a memorial ministry on a mission. That is, we are a ministry that will leave a memorial for coming generation to follow in Jesus' name. And that is why, as a church, we are tough. There is no question about that. We are tough on the basis of the truth. Uh, and we shall be remembered all through eternity, fading away like the stars of the morning. Losing their light in the glorious sun, thus shall we pass from the earth and its toiling only to be remembered by what we have done. Now you say, there is a lot to learn. Yes, what well, then do you do? You slice it. You slice it. Uh, somebody asked, uh, uh, somebody was told you can finish an elephant. And he said, no, I cannot finish an elephant. And then he was told, it takes cutting a little at a time, chopping a little at a time before you know you're going to finish an, uh, an elephant. So search it, study it, stick to it, stay on it, 
share it, slice it, simplify it, simplify it, make it easy for people to understand. Uh, you know, somebody in one of the uh, youth program in uh, one of the churches, uh, actually not in our own uh, uh, environment here, and uh, the the person, a young man that has been in the church for many many years, does not know the difference between water baptism and Holy Ghost baptism. But if you can simplify things and make it understandable for people, it will help a lot and the Lord will help us in Jesus name and then uh, finally you shun the works of the flesh shun the works of the flesh as we try to wrap it up understand that God is looking down from heaven He's looking for people that will hold on uh, to the truth of the gospel. He's looking for people that will hold up the banner of truth, the banner of faith. He's looking for people that will defend the truth of the gospel. He's looking for people that will preserve the old landmark in this modern time. And I pray that you'll be one of them. And I will be one of them. And all of us together, when the Lord shall come in glory, we will be rapturable together in Jesus' name. And as we try to pray right now, make up your mind and say to yourself, by the grace of God, I will not fall into this walk of the flesh. Look at them. Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Uh, now the works of the flesh, verse 19, are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emanation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You are going to say, by the grace of God, I will not compromise the truth. I will stand upon the truth of the word of God. I will preserve the legacy that the founding fathers of the church have laid. I will live please a life pleasing unto the Lord until face to face in glory I meet with my Savior. Rise upon your feet and let us pray. Commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. Tell the Lord to help you, to guide you, to hold you, to keep you, to preserve you in the name of Jesus. My sister, close your eyes. My brother, close your eyes. We are praying that you will not fail. You will not fall. You will not falter. That the Lord will keep you by the power of his might. That you will leave a lasting legacy for generations to come. That this church will be made better at your time and at my time. That we will not destroy the truth of the gospel that has been handed over to us. We found the joy to be real, to be true before we came. We'll keep it so. We'll make it better on the basis of the truth of the gospel. We will not take this church to the world. Declare, I will not take this church to the world. I will not bring the world into this church. But by me and through me, the light of the gospel will shine. The light of the gospel will shine. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. 